So let's start looking at quantifying drinking, and that becomes important when you're assessing somebody um, with an alcohol use disorder as to deciding how much is too much. And this is from the EML. Um, so uh, the sort of the definition of alcohol use disorder. So we actually speak about substance use disorder, and then you would specify that it was alcohol. But basically, very simple as anybody who's got any mental or physical symptoms that is caused by the alcohol, and they still continue to drink. That's the only definition. It's not about how much you drink or what you drink or whether you're dependent or not. But if you are drinking despite alcohol making trouble in your life, then you have a problem. When we um, count in terms of alcohol, when we try and measure alcohol, we talk about units, which is one unit is one um, gram of absolute alcohol. Um, and typically, the easy way to remember it is typically what you would buy over the counter, so a standard drink. So one beer, for example, a 350 ml beer, not the not the not the 600 ml ones. Um, that will be one one unit. 120 ml wine, so that's half a glass of your normal big glass wine, um, and one tot of spirits, so one shot of spirits. Those will all equal one unit. So when we talk about heavy drinking. Um, uh, we have to understand what we're comparing it against. So generally responsible drinking is, we do always say men about two units per day, women one unit per day. Um, but basically it's better to think of it in a weekly amount because nobody spaces it out exactly like that. So roughly we say to men, it's responsible if you stay under 14 units in a week, obviously not taking it all in one go. You need to have at least two days in the week that you're not drinking. And for women, we would say about seven units in a week is still acceptable responsible drinking. There's different thresholds in the literature of what's considered heavy drinking um, or what we sometimes call binge drinking. But heavy drinking is to do with drinking just the amount of alcohol that one's consuming within a week. Um, and there per day in one go, it'll be five units for men and four units for women. And some studies use eight units uh, for men and five units for women. But all the studies I'm presenting today uses the, 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 the five unit, four unit definition. So there's definitely a dose response relationship between the amount you drink and the risk and adverse account, uh, events that you have. So people who drink a lot have got a lot more problems than people who don't drink a lot. And so there are some criticism about using this one you know, number to say how much is too much, um, but it just gives us a rough idea in terms of um, how much somebody is drinking and being able to plot that over time as well. But certainly the more drinking you have, the more trouble you're probably going to get into. So the DSM-5 criteria for substance use disorder has actually changed dramatically from four to five. So in the old DSM, there was a differentiation between substance use and substance dependence, and they no longer do that. So a lot of people, when they talk about substance dependence, they still use the old DSM criteria, which is all about withdrawal and tolerance and all of that. The DSM done now is they've put them all together in one definition of substance use disorder, um, and it's got four uh, sections. There's 11 total criteria. Um, and in the side there, you can see the amount of criteria you meet will tell you whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. But the one is impaired control. So just taking a lot of substances, not cutting down, even though you want to, spending a lot of time either trying to get or recovering from substances or having cravings. There's a whole section on all the impact on social issues. So it's not managing at work or not managing in your relationships. There's what they call risky use, so getting into dangerous situations because of your alcohol. Maybe your alcohol is already causing you an illness and you continue to drink anyway. And then lastly, you'll see there's only two that really fits into that dependence criteria, which is tolerance. So um, being able to have to drink more and more to get the same effect um, and having withdrawal when you don't actually have those. So you don't have to be dependent to actually have a substance use disorder. The classification we like to use and important for the students as well as the one that we use in the EML and the one that the WHO uses, it's quite simple. It's also easy to explain to patients. And there are three levels. Don't worry too much about the amounts because the amount is not so important. That is uh, partly just a sort of a rough idea. And um, what's more important is the effect it has on somebody's life. So hazardous use is if there's a risk of harmful consequences, but you're drinking way too much. So you're potentially at risk. So that is if you're drinking more than that 14 units um, uh, per week, and for women more than those seven units per week, but it's not yet having a negative effect on your life. So that's a little bit the way the students drink, right? You guys drink. The next level is harmful use. So that is using too much. And again, the actual levels is not so important, 
about the effect it has on your life. And when it starts to have a negative effect, whether it's physical or social or work, it doesn't matter. If it's having a negative impact on your life, but you're continuing to drink, that will call harmful use. And then dependence has all those criteria of when you're actually physically addicted to the substance. So if you don't have that substance, you're going to go into withdrawal and therefore you have various um, behaviors to try and, and, and keep that as a substance. So very important when we are doing our cage questionnaires and when we are classifying our patients, if you are diagnosing somebody with an alcohol use disorder, to always make clear about what your um, classification for that patient is, because it is going to influence how we manage these patients. So we've talked quite a little bit now about the impact of alcohol and understanding how to think about alcohol.